Hello, we're back, finally, thank God. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the piano roll block videos that I started a while ago. Um, so this is going to be the last one in the little series. Uh, so I'm going to go over some more advanced features of the piano roll block from the toy box synth bundle, picking up where we left off last time. Okay, so I'm going to start off by adding a piano roll block to this rack. And I'm going to add the polyphonic version of the quad synth, put that up there. I'm enabling the low pass gate button on the quad synth to give it a nice pluck sound and connect it up to the piano roll. Um, I'm going to start off by recording a phrase into the piano roll. I want to record a two bar phrase, so I'm going to zoom out like this and extend the loop points to two bars. I've enabled the metronome in my DAW so I have something to play along to. So first I'm going to press play on the piano roll and then press play in my DAW. Now if I pause the piano roll will also pause and if I start the piano roll will start. So to record my phrase, I'm going to enable record like this and then start logic. And there is my recorded phrase. So the first thing I'm going to do is quantize the notes using the quantize knob to snap the positions of the notes to the grid. These are two buttons next to the quantize control. The first one is length quantize. When I click on this, you can see that now not only are the positions of the notes being quantized to the grid, but also the length of the notes are also quantized. The button below that is the post quantize button. When this button is disabled, the quantize function is applied before the other effects. For example, you can see that even though the notes are quantized, if I change the stretch control, the resulting note positions will not be snapped to the grid. If I enable the post quantize button, then when I move the stretch control, the notes will also be snapped. So I'm going to make some copies of the pattern by first making sure no notes are selected, clicking copy and then going to the other patterns and clicking paste like this. Now I'm going to modify pattern two by turning a few knobs. I'm going to enable a scale, set it to a minor scale. Now I can um, apply the effect of the knobs permanently by clicking the print effects button. And then I can go to the next pattern make some changes, set the scale again, and print the result permanently. And now I've got three different patterns. I'm going to switch between them using MIDI notes. To do that, I'm going to connect the pitch port of the note in block to the pattern port. I need to set the starting note of the range of notes that I want to switch patterns with. I can do that from the options page, this control up here specifies the starting note for pattern selecting using MIDI and when sending pitch values to the pattern port. I'm going to set it to C3. Now I can select the patterns using my MIDI keyboard. Over here is a color selector. I can use this to enable the light guide LEDs on a native instrument's complete control keyboard. When set, you can see the keys light up showing the range of trigger notes, and it also shows which pattern is currently selected on the lights on the keyboard. The next control on this options page is the start quantize setting. I can use this to have the piano roll wait until the beginning of the next bar before it plays or changes pattern. Uh, this is similar to the launch quantization setting in Ableton Live. 
Now when I press notes on the keyboard, instead of changing patterns instantly, it waits until the end of the bar. This is useful when performing live with the block to keep everything in time and locked to the grid. If I want to start and stop the sequences from my MIDI keyboard, I can connect the gate port on the note in block to the play port like this. Now when I press a key, the sequence starts and when I release the key, the sequence stops. I can select how the patterns are triggered using the play mode setting here. It's currently set to loop. This means the pattern will loop continually, continually while it's playing. I can move the loop points like this. And I can even modulate these loop points from the front panel using the AB modulation ports, using the sliders up here. Let me do that really quickly so you can see that in action. Okay, so back to the play modes. The next play mode once will mean that the sequence will play only once and then stop. The next mode is toggle, which means that gates arriving at the play port will alternately play and then stop playback. And sync mode means that the playhead will always be synchronized to the current playback position in your DAW. Below the play mode setting, we have the size setting, which is used to select the maximum size of the pattern. I can set it up to eight bars. If I zoom right out, you can see all eight bars of the pattern now. Okay, so I'm gonna, going to reset the block by right clicking on the clear button here. This will clear all the patterns and reset the block back to its default state. One feature I want to show you is how to enter notes using step recording. To do that, I just enter record when the block isn't playing and then without pressing play, I play some notes on the keyboard like this. And as you can see, the notes are entered into the sequence. I can play a chord and use the right mouse button to jump to a new position in the pattern and then continue entering notes. I can also enter notes in step record mode automatically by connecting something to the pitch import port up here, like this. Clear the pattern first. And let's zoom out a little bit. Now I can connect the modulation wheel port on the MIDI note in block. Press record and move the modulation wheel. I can use the ports in this second column to connect all kinds of signals to record patterns of notes into the piano roll. I can control the recording position using the record position port. Let's try that. Add a multi breakpoint oscillator from the designer's pack. I need to turn off mirroring and I also need to switch off the analog modeling of the block because I don't need that. Set the sync mode to free and slow down the speed of the oscillator. Now connect the unidirectional output of the oscillator to the record position port. Now you can see the record position is moving independently of the playback position. And if I add a couple of LFOs and connect these to the pitch and gate input ports, I can record into the pattern using values from the LFOs. The LFO connected to the pitch port at the moment has too big a range. I can reduce its range by passing it through the bento control voltage processor first. I need to set the oscillator to unidirectional output so it only outputs positive values. And I can scale and offset the oscillator's output using control voltage processor like this. 
Now I can experiment with modulating the frequency or shape of these two LFOs to get a variety of patterns. Okay, so that's a quick look at some of the more advanced ways that you can use a piano roll block. I hope that was useful and have fun experimenting. <laughs>